moving on to the top four of today's Mr. Yeah. Showdown. Apologies, I lied. We're not going to go into the Shortly quarter final. Shortly. Yeah. <laughs> Farman had either ideas. Yeah, well. <laughs> well, Farman is here finally after drawing out his top eight set. Mm -hmm. He does get a victory over Rain. Moves on to the top four, but he will play against Benjamin. Both players we have seen on stream already. Mm, so both indeed. teams familiar to viewers of the Swiss rounds. Yeah, and uh, Farman running the Charizard Venusaur core. Um, what else? Can you really Benjamin. Call it a core? Uh, it, it is a combination that they use together. Whereas Benjamin, we do see. I, I only recall the Arachnid just because of that huge size. I believe he's running that Totem Arachnid. Pentagross, Incineroar, Arachnid. Mm. A relatively slow team. Mm. So we'll be seeing With how the these two Porygon players. Porygon 2 as well. Yep. Uh, yes. So it'll be interesting to see how these players um, match up against each other, especially since um, Benjamin did fall to Eugene, who was also running a Venusaur, although it was a, a different variant, because yeah. the farm prefers the fast hard hit Fast Venusaur. Venusaur is not immune to Ice Punch or Incineroar Flare Blitz, so mm. not quite the same matchup. Yeah, the, the only problem is landing those hits in the first place, but... Um, it does have Electric Terrain yes. to deny Steep Powder. Correct, so a lot of, uh, I think, um, farm success will hinge on how he plays with his other Pokemon. Maybe he might not... He I mean, he's not even incentive... He might not even want to bring the Venusaur Charizard combo. He could rely if on. If he feels trick room, he could rely on Snorlax instead. Yeah, and that's the question for Benjamin to ask himself: How much does he value trick room in this particular matchup? Mm. And if he overly prepares for one, does he really? F does he fall victim to the other mode that Farman could run? As the, as the interview said, Farman likes this team because he has two modes and is really flexible in the best of three situations. Now he needs to be careful that the Snorlax doesn't get his very eaten by the Arachnid, it mm. as we saw in the Swiss round. Yeah, yummy. I mean, Especially oh if he has Recycle, in which case, Recycle just has taken off the table as an option. Mm. As Norwex becomes dramatically less of a, of of a, a threat. threat. Yeah. Although ideally you want to stop the Snorlax from even setting up in the first place if you can. Uh, but yeah, the taking away the berry does reduce its longevity. Especially so especially if you go for it immediately. <laughs> so just The problem of course is that if Snorlax gets to jump before the Reckoning can bug bite, then all of a sudden he no longer can bug bite the mm. berry away. And, and Farm will be in control of when he wants to recover. Yes, he can recycle whenever like he's below half. Yeah, I think that was like way back in 17, the argument between Curse and uh, Recycle Legs was that... Curse and Belly Drum. Yeah, sorry, Curse and Belly Drum. Uh, that Belly Drum Legs is in more control of when and uh, how you want to use your berry yep. in those circumstances. Whereas Curse kind of has to take the hits and roll with it. Especially in this 2018 format where knockoff's distribution has dramatically increased. <laughs> there's only really there's only one knockoff user in 17. Which uh, I can't remember right now, but moving on, we will be going on to the semi-finals here between Farman and Benjamin. Um Yeah, it is reversed. I think Farm is on the right and Benjamin on the left. We are looking at Benjamin's team. Mm. So it's gonna be the Incineroar, Araquanet, Tapu Bulu, Tapu Coco. Metagross and Porygon 2. Yes, whereas Farm, as seen earlier, was running the Tapu Coco, Landorus, Charizard, Venusaur, Cresselia, and Snorlax. So both teams have their. Again, you pointed out Farman has two clear modes he can go for. Mm. Whereas Benjamin is only has the Tapu Coco as a fast mode, or he has Metagross as well. Mm. So, Trium on both sides, interesting to see who wants to go for it, who wants to counter it if possible. I think, I think the ball is in Farm's court, because as you mentioned, um, uh, Benjamin only really has one main threat or, or one very main strategy which is to start sweeping with Mega Metagross and the question is how Farm wants to deal with this strategy. The Cinera Porygon 2 mm. coming out so potential fake out Chrome immediately for Benjamin. Ooh. As yeah, and Farman goes for the fast mode so catching Farman out here with the Incineroar lead which is fast very well against Tapu Koko and Charizard. Yeah, so things are looking good. I mean, I mean the, the danger always of course is that you trick Roman and the, the the Coco Volt switches into Snorlax. Mm. Yeah, as I was gonna, I was gonna say, all is not lost for farm because if he brought Snorlax, now would be a good time to switch it in. Dangerous though. He could catch a knockoff on the way in. Mm. I think Since you Incineroar is not really threatened. He's not really threatened enough to go for fake out. I think. I, I think you take. I think you take that. I think you take the risk because Incineroar might want to fake out the Coco, who could be running Thorn to but stop Borgon the. But Dragon Two doesn't. Dragon Two mm. itself isn't that incentivized to trick room. He might just want to attack. Mm. And if you switch his noise and he doesn't go for trick room, then you're in trouble because you don't have your own trick room on the field. Mm. Interesting, interesting. So the intents of both players here not really clear. And I think Farmer just wants to go for fast mode, and Incineroar is a big roadblock to that plan. Mm. Yeah, I just go switch out the Coco, not even going to vote switch, fearing the fake out onto that slot. It and he brings in the noise, hoping for a trick room to come off. 
Mage uh, involved as well. Yeah, again, hard, when you get Hari, you go for knockoff into that slot. First game though, I kind of feel that but the farm might get away with it. But it's very safe that the Coco is going to switch out though. Either both switches or naturally switches out. Mm. So the Zemo figure switches out, which means you can catch whoever comes in with the knockoff. Oh but he does go for a safe yeah. out into the Coco slot, trying to prevent both switch. And Chester just goes for the overheat into the Porygon too. Porygon too? No, into, into the Incineroar. Just damage on the Incineroar, recognizing that Incineroar has no way to recover. They don't run Drain Punch. But again, Thunderbolt in actually terrain into the Charizard, gonna do more than half. Ooh, very, very nice move by Benjamin there. Faking give, out. Uh, yeah, doesn't give Snorri the trigger and good, good damage onto Charizard. Yeah, not just fake out from the Incineroar, but a uh, whole the whole play was a fake out. I didn't even set up Trick Room. So now, the, the, the knockoff on the Snorlax is available for the Incineroar. And Charizard is forced to switch out because it, it's at minus two now. It can't really do much in this situation. He might have double switch even. Hmm. Yeah, I, I... If he has to, when first thing he, firstly he needs something to take the Thunderbolt in the first place. Unless he brought Venusaur, there's no real good option to take a, well, he's gonna bring Venusaur. There you go, the Venusaur does hit the field he's here. He's still terrain boosted from the Porygon 2. He does eat the knockoff, so let's go lose his berry. I think Farman will use to take that trade. Hey. And, ooh, and he catches the Ice Beam onto the in switch in. So not even going for the Thunderbolt into Charizard, gets the Ice Beam off and return into the Incineroar. Yeah, at this point I think Farm has recognized that his Snorlax is not going to set up Belly Dream in this game. Instead, it just opts to inflict as much damage as possible. But now if he has Loki, I think Loki will KO. Hmm. He has no berry to save. Actually, even if he had a berry, he wouldn't be able to eat it. He has to worry about the Venusaur though. He has to wonder if the Incineroar is within KO range at this he point. And he does have Sun, so... Hmm. He could... But he can't sleep out thanks to the terrain. Yes. So he only has, to, uh, he only has attacking options and... Oregon 2 is going to sponge everything. Yeah, I mean, you could throw the attack in Incineroar and possibly save your your um, Snorlax. But again, yeah, it begs the question of what Snorlax is going to do once the Incineroar goes down. Benjamin hasn't shown his last two. Well, converse, uh, conversely, Farm has... Revealed his entire team. Yeah. And everything has taken damage. Charizard is weakened, Snorlax is weakened, Venusaur is weakened. Venusaur withdraws again, so sending in Charizard once again. I think he needs to catch an Ice Beam again. Yeah, but that's just more and more damage Flavis racking in the up. sun. Oh, never mind low kick. This might be enough. A good ton of recoil though. Oh, Ooh, but Snorax hangs on. Barely but hangs But hangs on as well. As Ice Beam into Charizard, we'll take it. Not quite deep. As return, we'll pick off the Incineroar. Hmm. After the recoil. Actually, no, without the recoil, it would have been enough. Based on what we saw the previous turn. Yeah, a bit unfortunate that uh, the he chose to go for the Ice Beam, but uh, granted that there was a Venusaur slot, it's logical. Coco and does hit the field Yeah, though. the thing is that he called the previous switch in, so he was a bit... He didn't think Farman would fall for it again. Mm. But Farman did make the switch, and will benefit. Charizard gets in kind of for free, but Coco comes in immediately to threaten it. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm kind of feeling this game to be something that Porygon 2 can just clean up the game and just... Without Snorlax to set up in front of Porygon 2. Porygon 2 isn't really threatened by damage from Charizard. Yeah, not only that, Farm might have one Pokemon up, but all his Pokemon have taken damage and... Both is Snorlax and Charizard. Coco's just gonna clean up at this point. Yeah. Sun's not gonna last forever, in which case the Venusaur will no longer outspeed the Tapu Coco. Hmm. Oh boy. I I don't think yeah, Farm might not have enough in the tank to so get rid of the Porygon too. Snorlax instead of sacking the Snorlax. Ooh, I don't really agree with this play though. As Kirbo Havoc is just gonna pick off the Charizard. Even with even if he tried to protect. Or hmm. he might even have caught the Coco coming in. Which is a very good play because the Coco is the only healthy thing left on Farman's team. Mm. If he eats this Gigabo Havoc, I think that's it. That's curtains for Farman. Yeah, Porygon 2 can just clean up uh, afterwards. But it's going to so he wants to guarantee KO, even if Charizard tries to protect. What does Porygon 2 go for here in this Sh case? A decently strong Ice Beam into mm. the Coco, taking damage once again. So now everything on Farman's team has taken a good chunk of damage. Will the Porygon 2 get a special attack boost? or No. I don't think so. Hmm. So Venusaur gonna come in, it's gonna have one, one more turn of sun, I believe. Turn of sun. Which is can be protected through with the Tapu Koko. After which Farman has to win a speed tie and <laughs> somehow Gigavote KO. Hmm. Difficult. Yeah, Benjamin says he's gonna save his own Koko, recognizing that once Trigon runs out, he's in a very good position. And Metagross Trigo? falls. Oh you mean once Sun. Well, once sun runs mm. out. And Metagross comes in to wall everything Venusaur has up his sleeve, including oh the Oh my god. So I not even the not even Gigabyte have on Farman's side. It's gonna be Bloom Doom from Venusaur. 
yeah, it's, it's not going to accomplish much if he's aimed at the Metagross. Metagross, even though hasn't Mega Evolve, should be able to take this very comfortably. Yeah, even given Blumdum's high base power of Leaf Storm, it's not going to be enough. Let's Ooh, go for Porygon 2. Alright. Will a double up even get it though? Full uh, health Porygon 2? Yeah, he's not going to get oh it with a double God. up. Not even with a double up with Thunderbolt here. Uh, maybe if he double up with a Giga Volt Havoc. <laughs> nice Beam going to finish off the Venusaur. Mm. Not quite, but sunlight fading, it's as good as dead. Yep. Especially since terrain faded at the same time. Aye. So now no way to handle both Metagross and the Porygon 2, let alone the Tapu Koko at the back. Hmm. Things are looking quite grim for farm here. It's hard to see how else he could approach it. He could have approached it though. If he had brought his own Cresselia, he's always threatened by the Porygon 2 resetting Trick Room. Hmm. And Cresselia itself doesn't exactly enjoy facing Incineroar. Yeah. I think Benjamin's approach, his one strategy approach is better than um, Farm's approach because it's something that he can adjust in the game. It's well, just strange that mm. Farman didn't bring Landorus given the Landorus is, is his only answer to Incineroar. You do have to worry about Porygon 2 though, the Ice Beam. If so you, can't you just bring 4 things that can't touch Incineroar? Well... He oh, even goes for this Storm to lower his special attack as a final hurrah. Yeah, has to get rid of the Porygon 2 before I can recover. So, I I don't disagree with that, but now he is loud to his last 2, so Venusaur cannot switch out the reset that special attack. So, it's not looking too good. Um, Yeah, apparently Snorlax is not big enough to carry this game. And yeah, Coco will clean this up for Benjamin. Mm. Uh, as mentioned, Benjamin's strategy uh, can allows him to adjust on the fly, depending on what farm decides to bring. But as in... It's it's flexible in how he uses the Porygon too, which I think is something that must be um, commented on. Uh, just because you can set up Trick Room doesn't mean you should set up Trick Room. I just don't see a way for Farman to handle Incineroar plus Porygon 2. Yeah, the problem is that Farman has to commit to one of his modes, and Benjamin can easily adjust to it in-game by di by seeing what sort of a uh, mode uh, Farm has brought. Farm tried to sort of um, pull a fast one on Benjamin by saying, oh, okay, here's my fast mode, but Benjamin sort of smelled out that, um, I'm just going to wait before I set up Trick Room in case Snorlax appears on the first turn. So, caution. Throwing really caution to the wind It's there. not a very good bait because Double Coco itself, you always threaten the boss switch into Snorlax. Mm. Mm. So, no one's yeah. going to fall for So, maybe it would be a better bait if it was Charizard and Venusaur at the start? Perhaps. Mm. He oh. really needs to drum before he can get knocked off under Trick Room. Mm. That's a huge ask. Yes, indeed. Especially since I don't think Snorlax carries Protect. So he can't avoid the knockoff on turn 1 if he leads his Snorlax. I think Farm tries to play with Trick Room mode. I think he lead the the crest and tries to say, Oh, okay, well, you want to reverse my Trick Room? But the problem is Benjamin doesn't need to immediately reverse the Trick Room on the first turn. He Benjamin can do so in the second. just going to lead in Sinra for example, again. And <coughs> I just ask Farman, what is your answer to this lead? I don't think Farman has an answer. Landorus can't handle Porygon 2. And everything else can't handle Incinero. Yeah, I, I think it's just, just a question of Porygon 2 being able to stick around and, and providing a lot of cover for Porygon 2 really, just really, only really has fulfills one strong role in this position, which is to check Landorus. Hmm. And once you can scare the Landorus out, and let's not forget, L Landorus coming in, it already has to eat the minus one Intimidate from the Incinero. Nah, not, not only that, I think the fact that Porygon 2 is just firing attacks left, right, and just chipping away at Farm's team. Farm had to keep Farm kept switching in and out of game one, just kept taking free damage over and over again, uh, up to a point where his team just fell apart. Yeah, he's going to incinerate Porygon 2 again, and Farman has to adjust to this. He does bring the Landorus, and yeah, the so one at check. At least he doesn't give the Porygon 2 electric terrain. So Charizard can't take any combination of attacks from these two. Though Flabless in the Sun, <laughs> let's not go there. Yeah. So it seems a very easy play for um, Benjamin. You fake out the, the Charizard, you Ice Beam Landorus. <coughs> hmm. Let's get an attack boost as well. But the problem here is that Farman's moves are very telegraphed, as you pointed out. Hmm. Charizard can't touch Incineroar. And Landorus can't really touch Porygon too, which means Farman has to commit. And he doesn't want to commit that he has a U-turn. All switch out. Hmm. Snorlax, does alright. No, uh, Cresselia is a prime target for that knockoff as well, so... Yep. Again, he only has one answer to the Incineroar, which is Landorus. And this Landorus has already been intimidated. Just forced to switch out. So, so that's, why I think we, that's why we saw him go for the overheat on turn 1, because 
he recognized that he just didn't have any option to hit Incineroar with. Yeah, they did it. The hidden ability for Incineroar coming in clutch here. Paragon 2 going for the Thunderbolt. He's gonna do less than half this time. Hmm. But it does, does mean that he will get KO'd by a double target. Well, I guess the... But that's what, I think that's what Farman wants. Because that gives a free switch into Snorlax under trick roll. Ooh. So Benjamin could so not give that, but oh, goes for the ally switch here. But he, does, he doesn't really take advantage of it. Sure, he gets a heat wave off, but Incineroar and Paragon 2 are going to take less than 25% each. Ooh, that's a lot of damage on the Paragon 2. A critical hit to see the Incineroar knock off onto the crest slot. So actually predicting the ally switch. Getting rid of the berry there. And Ice Beam... No, I think he called the Snorlax switch in. Ah, okay, that would make sense. Yeah, I mean, if the play you were going for was the Trick Room and Snorlax switching, you at least get rid of the berry, so... And you wrap, uh, wrap some damage onto the Snorlax so that he can't belly drop. It's the drop. berry, it's just the berry, really. So then you, you force the Snorlax to not get recovery on the belly drum turn, which means you're playing against a 50% Snorlax, which is much easier to handle. And I guess firing into the Charger slot isn't that... Okay, um, he needs another crit, I think. Oh, he's gonna overheat into Porygon too. Mm? Yeah, he is. Does connect. That's gonna KO <laughs> with the Helping Hand. So he does remove the Trick Room and now he can get his own Trick Room up. Oh no, actually no he can't because Incineroar will get rid of the Cresselia and Flabby's in the sun especially. That might just KO Cresselia. Not no, quite not though. Quite. Yeah, Benjamin definitely favoring a more bulky Incineroar with less attack investment. Hmm. I, I would say it's more down to Cresselia's bulk rather than a lack of uh, attack or investment on the Incineroar's part. Coco does switch in here so Benjamin looking in a good position to start uh, cleaning up some of the kills here. Let's be careful because there's a Scarf Lando at the back. And his main counter is gone. Mm. Not only that, this is really, really juicy. Plus, you have two Earthquake weak Pokemon here. Oh. And Incineroar is on the field, which means he has to switch out. So he doesn't have Intimidate that he can switch in. Yeah, I, I think Benjamin does that. He hedges his bets. He switches out to Incineroar. Yep. He's going to preserve the Intimidate for Landorus. Importantly, Metagross though, switches. Farman doesn't switch either. Which means he will. Farman is going to get an attack off with something. Really? Farman doesn't switch? Oh, Charizard protects, actually. Okay. Ally switch doesn't count, Justin. <laughs> Oh, he protects and ally switches. What? What? Okay. Okay. That's a play I've not seen before. Ally switch to dodge uh, to protect. I'm a bit upset right now. <laughs> From the crowd cheering. It's such a terrible play in my opinion. <laughs> it is because I think I think Farm wants to sacrifice and same brings Benjamin's team is all earthquake weak. He wants to bring in Bring in Landorus and just start using Earthquake. Oh god, he's gonna press the ice switch again, isn't he? Uh, well. Actually, no, he can't because both things are faster than Charizard now. Mm. Congrats, Farman, you played yourself. No, I, I mean, Ally switch is priority, so. Okay. No, then, then whatever doesn't kill. The, whatever, the first move will kill Cresselia. Ah. It's at red. So the second move is gonna hit Charizard anyway. Oh, true, true. Oh, okay, that's what you meant. And he's gonna risk the Landorus on the switch. Oh my god, if Metagross goes for the Ice Punch here on the Landorus. Could be game. <laughs> He's gonna like switch again. <laughs> 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 yes, isn't he? I well, I I can't really say. Oh, he didn't. Okay. Electro web though. Interesting. That's not gonna KO though. It oh, is. it does. Elec electric terrain. Okay, what does Metagross go for though? Ice punch would be huge. Just goes go for, for the ice punch. punch. Ooh, really punishing here. Takes out Landorus in a single hit. Yeah. So as I was saying, I think it's much better off if Farm just lets. Pokemon feign so he can naturally bring in. Yeah, that was his win condition. Mm. Scarf Earthquake. And he threw that away. <sighs> it was a safe play for Benjamin because Ally Switch can't dodge the Electro Web. Mm. And Ice Punch would have killed whatever was on the field. Charizard was already weakened. Well, there is still hope no, there yet is for not. Farm, I think. He has Charizard fresh and uh, Coco fresh. Has a Z. No, no, nope. no Z moves have been used. So Charizard Unless it's Coco. Unless it's Coco is also Z move. Which it could be. But so is Benjamin. Uh, and it's gonna be a speed tie. Yeah, Benjamin's team is so healthy. Yep. I don't see a way back. Uh, he needs to kill Metagross. No, he needs to kill right. Coco. Yes. And hope Charizard survives the hit from Metagross. At the same time, he needs to preserve his Coco so that because his Coco is the more damaging thing, more damaging option he has against Benjamin's Incineroar. Which is uh, a bit difficult. Okay. <laughs> Elastic should protect into a self <laughs> KO. Oh. Uh, I mean, at that point, I think you let the crest go down. But, alright. Uh, uh. 
Who's here? Vault, vault is that? Vault. That's uh, I believe that's Benjamin's. Hmm. I I don't know. I kind of feel it's farms. Oh, it's farmans. Yeah, based on the angle. He needs to kill the Coco. I don't know. Is it possible? It's a roll. I think a pathetic roll by roll. But I think Benjamin has invested his out since he's running electro web. Oh, he needs a crit, huh, probably. Let's see that HP stat. Not, Not enough. enough. And Thunderbolt, yeah, he's gonna get his own Gigabolt. Gonna kill Charizard, that will be the game. Yeah, if I'm not even bothering protect, protecting his Charizard, why? He needed to kill there. It was, it was just not, not an issue. Because mm. if you protect her and Metagross kill his Coco, he loses anyway. Yeah. So he needed two KOs that turn, if Metagross has stayed in. He didn't even get one, so that's probably gonna be the game. And the set. Wow, very fast series of matches here. Benjamin easily. Taking out that Chizer Y and the rest of Farm's team for that matter. I have a few Crest did. Okay, Crest did get the helping hand off at least. So yeah. he did something. But the rest of the game plan was just. Yeah, Farman just got way too attached to things that he should, she should have let die. Mm. His win condition was, as he pointed out, Scarf of Quick. Everything was weak to ground. And he just brought Coke Landorus in on a switch and got it KO'd yeah. for no reason whatsoever. And at that point, at that point Crest could have gone down last time if he didn't ally switch into the slot for no reason. And logically speaking, Benjamin had no reason not to press Electro Web and Ice Punch was a safe play. Because you 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 Because Electro Web was gonna kill Cristalia, do decent damage to Charizard because it's weak to electric, and Ice Punch would have killed Charizard. It was a guaranteed play. There was no risk attached to it. And he just gave it to him. <laughs> Absolutely gave it to him. <laughs> you know what I think? I think Farmer was thinking, Ally Switch is gonna make you play mind games with yourself. <laughs> Ally Switch is such a good move, right guys? Ally Switch is the best move in the game, right whoa, guys? Whoa, whoa, chill, 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 relax, relax. I mean, um, Farm did um, win against Brian where Brian did play himself with Ally Switch. So, I, I guess now it's Farm's turn. <laughs> Very well played for Benjamin. Uh, I, I wouldn't say it's really well played, but definitely he's able to recognize the win conditions. Um, not taking any unnecessary risks. Uh, uh, unnecessary risks. I believe if you open the dictionary, you see the words Ally Switch. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. So Benjamin moves on to the final. Mm. Hopefully, for his, for probably hoping to not face Eugene. Yeah, um, who is running a variant of Venusaur which he does not like. Um, the Mega variant, which, com <laughs> which he sh really struggled to break. But yeah, if I'm going down. And he really is. He did get the matchup. Take Ming won. <laughs> wow. So, well, good job to Take Ming and good job to Benjamin who will play each other in the final. So overcoming what looked like a. What they claim to be bad matchups. <laughs> I suppose Take Me was just being just trying to be cute. <laughs> Daniel he was a bad matchup against Eugene. Um he just triumphed in the end. And we'll play against Benjamin for the title of mid season showdown champion. Well to be fair, I think Take Me actually fought Eugene and lost to him in Swiss. If I recall correctly. No, no, he won. Oh he won. Yeah, but I mean the feeling of struggling because at that point he doesn't really have a strong way to get rid of Venusaur as well. It only came down to Tyranita. Apparently he does. He won. <laughs> Well, you can't argue with the result. Okay, because from what he told me, like before the, um, the interview, or no, after the interview actually, he told me that the only way he, that he beat Eugene was with two flinches on 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 the, on on the, the Venusaur. Venusaur. Yeah, I suppose. So maybe got him again. Mm, Who knows? Perhaps. I'm sure Tigmin played well. Yeah. He's moving on to the final against Benjamin. So both players will be moving on to the final immediately since we have since we do want to. Get a start in on dinner before the dinner rush here in My town. My God, we're actually gonna end before dinner. That's a first, I think, of r rarity in tournaments. We're still gonna hit the rush hour crowd, so. Ah, yeah. I suppose there is merit in letting tournaments drag on while this we start. This is Orchard. And uh, we don't have to eat here, Matthew. But yeah, we'll be moving on to the finals, so stay tuned.